as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Hello there, this is Diamond. I've got a little office near 53rd Street on Broadway, 8th floor. My business? Trouble. What kind of trouble? Well, take your pick. If you come up with something unusual, a new kind of trouble, drop around and see me. Because I'm known along the big street as a shamus, a gumshoe. Or to the guy on Park Avenue as a private detective. If you happen to be stuck with your problem, for $100 a day in expenses, I'll chase it around until I can catch up and break its back. I average about 20 fast rounds a week with old man trouble, and so far, the decision's been on my side. But uh, don't misunderstand me. It's my business to beat him, but I respect him. Trouble goes to work with every trick in the book. So I play it the same way, and believe me, when I put him away for the count, I don't clap my little hands in glee. I know he's just taking a rest, and he'll be back again with some new stunts. Want to know how he works? Well, the other day, I was on the way to my office. I stopped at the corner, newsstand, 53rd and Broadway, to buy a paper and to say hello to an old friend. Hi, Mr. Diamond. Well, hello, Jeff. How's the newspaper business? Oh, swell. How's the detective racket? Oh, swell. Hey, you don't sound too happy. Jeff, I couldn't be happier if my hair was on fire. Take my advice, son, when you grow up. Be sure and get a job that pays off every week in that little white envelope. Don't ever become a private detective. It's like a penny getting lost in a gum machine. Well, I'm going to stick to the newspaper business. Good for you. Say, I was just about to go across the street to Mary Lou's and get some ice cream. How about it? Can I buy you a cone? Now, that is a beautiful idea. Let's go. Aren't you coming to work a little late, Mr. Diamond? Well, uh, you see, Jeff, I, I was up kind of late. Research, you know. Yeah, I know. I see him going into your office all the time. That blonde last week stopped traffic all the way to 42nd Street. Yeah, she was lovely. Got tired of social standards and shot her husband right through his morning cup of coffee. Was that the one in the headlines? That's the one. Oh, hello, Jeff. Hi, Mary Lou. Take a seat, Mr. Diamond. Well, what have you and your friend have? Well, I'm going to have a double strawberry. How about it, Mr. Diamond? Sounds great. Two double strawberries. Oh, uh, this is Mr. Diamond, Mary Lou. His office is in that building across the street. Oh, how do you do? Mm, how are you, Mary? Uh, all right, I guess. Business could get better, and I wouldn't mind at all. <laughs> Here are your cones. This is on me, Mr. Diamond. Oh, no, no, now put it away. Oh, now, come on. I asked you over, and that makes it my treat. Here's a five, Mary Lou. Mr. Diamond's money isn't any good today. Tell you what I'll do, Jeff. Give me a five a minute. Sure, here. Now, if you can tell me whose picture's on this bill, you can buy the cones. That a deal? That's a deal. Lincoln. <laughs> well, what's the matter? That's right, isn't it? Hmm? Oh, yeah. What's wrong? Where did you get this bill, Jeff? Well, I just made change for it a few minutes. Hey, what's the matter with that dough? <laughs> you two act like you've never seen a $5 bill before. Well, this fin's counterfeit. What? That's right. Good job, too. You sure? Yep. One of the best, in jo best engraving jobs I've ever run across. Paper's not too good. Oh, that's swell. That's real great. I get chipped out of a whole five bucks. Who gave it to you? I remember the guy, all right. He came by just before you did. Made change for him, the heel. Yeah. Five bucks is a lot of papers. I'll say it is. Well, maybe you're wrong. You could be. <laughs> Not Mr. Diamond. He's a private detective. Used to be a cop. Look, Jeff, mind if I take this bill along with me? Nah. What good's it gonna do me? Oh, it's not so bad. Here, I'll give you a good five for it. No, sir. You only learn by mistakes. I made a big one, so I'm out five. I'll get along. Look, it's worth the five. I'm just buying it from you. Uh, sure, Jeff. Uh, go ahead and take it. Uh -uh. Thanks a lot, Mr. Diamond, but I just can't. Okay, Jeff. Maybe I can find the guy who slipped this to you. Maybe we can get your five back. What are you going to do? Ah, uh, take a run down to the 5th Precinct. See how much of this stuff is floating around New York. Now, uh, I want you to do something for me, Jeff. Sure, anything. I want you to keep an eye out for the guy who gave you this phone. <laughs> I'm way ahead of you. Well, now, that's what I'm afraid of. I want you to promise me, if you do spot him, not to do anything until you get in touch with me. Promise? Yeah, okay. And well, I'll be at the station. Ask for Lieutenant Levinson's office. Right. Uh, here's for the ice cream, Mary Lou. Good ice cream, too. Oh, thanks. I make it here. Right in back. Take a quart home some night. I always do, but it generally has a cork in it. I left Mary Lou's ice cream parlor and headed for the 5th Precinct Police Station. I don't usually start something like that, but when a kid gets fleeced out of a whole day's pay, I get a little hot under the collar. 
I walked into the squad room and spotted Sergeant Otis putting shine on his big shoes. Oh, it's you, Diamond. Now, what good is that going to do you, Otis? You can lose a whole can of polish in the cracks. What do you mean? My shoes ain't cracked so bad. Well, maybe not, but I've seen bacon that look better. Oh, duh. If you want to see the lieutenant, go on in. Thank you, Sergeant. Until we meet again. Uh, why don't you stop trying to be so funny? Sergeant, I'll do it if you'll do something for me. What? Cut off your head. That face could start a Harry Carey epidemic. Uh... Hello, Walt. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Now, what the devil's the uh-huh about? What do you mean? That bilious explosion you just popped up with. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Sound like you just swallowed a whole pineapple. Why? What do you mean, why? Who's dead? Huh? The body you said you found. The body I said... Uh-oh, no, no, Walt. You're not built for it. Who? No, Walt, it's my routine. It won't work for you. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, sure you do. You wanted to know who's dead. Well, I'm not going to tell you. Huh? Don't try to be cute with me. You know what it's all about. I'm not going to be the fall guy. You just hunt for the body. Wait a minute. I don't know anything about a body. You wanted to know who's dead, didn't you? Sure, but that was just a gag. Okay, have your fun, but I'm not going to tell you. Tell me what? Who's dead? You mean somebody really is? What are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about what you just said. Now, who's dead? That's a stupid question. Why is it? Well, if you don't know who's dead, what the devil are you doing in charge of homicide? Go on over to the robbery detail. Now, you wait a minute. You said... Yes, Walt? Oh, get out of here. I did not. I never said, oh, get out of here. When I came in, I said, hello, Walt, and you said, "Uh uh-huh. Then I said, what do you mean, "Uh uh-huh? You wanted to know where the body was. I did not. I said, who's dead? Why? Oh, no, 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 please. I'm an old man. Oh, Walt, get away from that window and take a look at this. Oh, please. Do I have to? It'll probably explode. Now, be a good boy and open your riddle eyes. All right, but I just know I'll be sorry. Yeah. Hmm? You don't owe me any money. Well, if I did, I'd make sure to pay you off in this stuff. Why, what's wrong with... Where'd you get this? Some guy slipped it to Jeff, the newsboy. He got change for it. Oh, that certainly is a nice stunt. Well, maybe the guy didn't know he was passing counterfeit. I doubt it. You don't give a newsboy five bucks for a paper. Okay, tell me about it. The stuff has been flooding the city. We can't get a lead. Picked up a couple of passes, but they won't crack. How do they work? Look, Rick, this isn't my department. The Treasury boys are working on it right now. Why don't you go over and talk to them? Well, if you want to be snooty about it. Now, you wait a minute, Diamond. Yeah? Lieutenant Levinson, homicide. Is Mr. Diamond there? Now, wait a minute. Rick, it's for you. Yeah, wait just a minute. Here, Diamond, and if you're mixed up in something... Walt, be quiet. Hello? Mr. Diamond? Yeah, Jeff? Yeah, I just spotted the guy who slipped me the phony bill. He went into the bar next to the ice cream parlor. You stay where you are. I'll be right over. I'll be at the stand. Rick. Yeah? Please. Walt. Yeah? Bye. Bye. Jeff. Oh, Mr. Diamond. He hasn't come out yet. He's still in the bar. Come on. Where are we going? Leave your papers for a second. I want you to point him out. Okay. He's a big guy. You better be careful. Big guys always make me careful. You want me to go in with you? Just stick your head in the door and point him out, and then go on back to your papers. If I start bleeding, I'll scream. See him? No. Yeah, there he is. Over in that booth. Well, well, well. You know him? Yeah. Go on back to your stand. Oh, golly, Mr. Diamond, can I... No, Jeff, go on back. Okay. Hello, Walker. Huh? Oh. What do you want, Shamus? Well, I'll have a talk. Mind if I sit down? Does it make any difference? Not much. Then sit. You, uh, passed a phony five spot this morning. I did? Well, shame on me. How many more you got on you? I don't know what you're talking about. You want me to turn you upside down and shake it out of you? Diamond. Yeah? Boo. Walker. Yeah? Oh, hey, you... Let go! Oh, I busted my arm. You want it back? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Now, now let's see your pockets. Okay, okay. Get on your feet. I want to see what you're doing. All right. Okay, dump him. Hey, hey, what's going on here? Just relax, bartender. I'm taking care of some business. Well, there ain't going to be any rough stuff in my joint, so you better relax, sonny. Yeah, make this guy take his big paws off of me. He's trying to shake me down. Oh, yeah? You want me to call the cops, sonny? Maybe that's not a bad idea. How about it, Walker? You want him to call the law? I don't care who he calls. Just get out of my way, Diamond. You're not going anywhere. Uh, now, I told you to lay off, sonny, and I meant it. Now, let him go, you hear me? Look out, he's making a break. Just let him be. 
Get out of my way, Pop. You're too old to lose another set of teeth. I ain't turning you loose until that guy makes the street. Sorry, Pop. You better take a chair. <laughs> What happened? You see which way you went? Yeah, there it goes around that corner. Stay at the ice cream parlor, Jeff, so I can get you if I need you. I took off like a seagull in the hurricane. I turned the corner and spotted my man jumping into our cab, so I did the same. He led me across town to a little dive on 13th Street and got out of his cab. My boy parked up the block, and we watched while Walker looked around for a tail. When he was satisfied, he'd given me the shake he went in. I paid off my cabbie and followed it was another bar, and Walker wasn't anywhere in the room. I sat down, ordered a beer, and waited. After about ten minutes, I saw a couple of guys wander out of a door in the back. A couple of minutes later, a couple of more wandered out. So I wandered in. It was a small-time gambling setup. The kind you can throw in the back of your car if the cops come. I started getting that lousy feeling again. You don't just walk into a place like that unless someone wants you to. And if they do, it's usually because they got it fixed so you stay around. Maybe permanently. What are you telling me for, Diamond? Why? Make you uncomfortable? Yeah. That's cozy setup. Good way to get rid of bad money. Pay the winner off with counterfeit. I think we'd better go back to my office. Oh, I don't know. I might have a little fun here. I'll bet if one of those guys at the table knew he was going to be paid off in counterfeit, he'd just about tear this place apart. And you too. Diamond, don't be stupid. Oh, something new's been added. Yeah, and it makes so much noise when it goes off. Let's go back to my office, huh? For some reason, I just can't think of a good argument not to. This way. Have a seat. My uh, ankles get lumpy when I sit down. Bad circulation. Then stand on your head. Uh, it doesn't work. I keep talking to toes all day. How'd you get onto this setup? Oh, luck. You passed a bad bill to a newspaper boy. He spotted you for me. You know what happens to you? No. As a matter of fact, I was thinking what's going to happen to you. What do you mean? Treasury boys, homicide, fifth precinct. And tomorrow we're taking a full page ad in the Times. You should do a big business. You're lying. Okay. I think I'll sit down while you wrestle with it. You mean the team I know about this place and me? The only way they'll get to know you any better is when they give you a room number at Sing Sing. Oh, you mind if I put my feet up? Oh, go ahead. He kept asking questions, not waiting for answers. He was good and worried. And as long as I could keep him that way, the longer I was going to keep on breathing. I don't believe one rotten thing you said, Diamond. Okay. He kept trying to convince himself that I was lying. He wanted to shoot me in the worst way. He moved around behind his desk and sat down. Bless his little heart. I had both feet on the front of his desk, so I shoved out his heart. I pinned him against the wall with the desk and jumped up to get better leverage. I shoved so hard the front of the desk nearly cut him in two. He was stuck and he couldn't use his arms. I, I can't breathe. You want to tell me about it? I, I don't know a thing. Okay. You will look pretty silly from the waist down. Come on, Walker. If I mash you anymore, they'll be able to use you for wallpaper. Yeah. Okay, okay. Now leave the gun in your pocket. When I pull the desk back, put your hands on top of it. You try a stunt and you end up in half. <sighs> okay. What do you want to know? Who's the big wheel behind the counterfeit ring? You give me a chance if I tell you? No deals. I can't blame me for trying. All right, you try it. Now, you want back in the vice? No, 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 no. I'll tell you. Walker! Walker! He died with his head rolled back and his eyes staring up like he wanted to starve for trying. Whoever shot him had been out in the alley and had nailed him through the window. I looked out, but the killer had disappeared. So I put in a call to homicide, and finally Walt and his boys arrived. Diamond, don't you ever get tired of corpses? Well, of course not. I just do my bit and then try to make you happy. Hey, you want me to call the wagon and get the corner down here, Lieutenant? No, Otis. I thought we might all sit around and wait for the dead man to say something. Oh, uh, I was only asking, Lieutenant. Well, start using that mallet head of yours, you mallet head, and make a report. Okay. Now, Diamond, I want to know how you got mixed up in this thing. Well, the dead man was the one who slipped the paper boy the 45. I tailed him, and he was just about to tell me who was behind the ring when he got a hole in his head. Oh, he was going to tell you, was he? Just like that. What did you do, set his clothes on fire? No. We were playing truth and consequences, and he fibbed, so I... Now, you stop that. 
This guy was the only link we had on the counterfeit ring. And you have to fix it so he dies. Rick, there's enough phony money floating around in New York right now to start another Black Friday. This is the best setup we've run into since Dad Foster operated in 1937. Dad Foster? Yeah, Dad Foster. You remember hearing about him. Yeah, is he still doing time? No, he served his sentence and he's gone straight ever since. How do you know? Where is he? He runs a little saloon on 53rd Street. 53rd? Thanks, Bob. Oh, now, you wait a minute. Who the devil are you calling? A quiz program. I want to win an electric chair. Oh. Mary Lou's ice cream parlor. Is uh, Jeff the newsboy there? Well, yes. It's for you, Jeff. Thanks. Hello? Jeff, this is Mr. Diamond. I want you to do me a favor. Sure, anything for you. Okay, now, you know the saloon next to the ice cream parlor? Yeah. You know the bartender? Yeah, old guy. Buys a paper from me every night. All right. Now, stay in the parlor and keep an eye on the front of the saloon. If the bartender comes out, find out where he goes. But for Pete's sake, be careful. Sure, Mr. Diamond. I'll do what you say. Is something up? Well, uh, could be. Now, if anything happens before I get there, call Lieutenant Levinson. I'll tell you all about it when I see you. Getting to be a pretty important fellow, Jeff. Phone calls now. Oh, that was Mr. Diamond. He wants me to stay here and keep an eye on the front of the saloon. Okay? Oh, sure, of course. But why did he want you to do that? Oh, it's something big, I think. Something to do with the bartender that works there. The bartender? Yeah. I'll just sit up in front here and keep an eye out. Uh, look, Jeff, watch the store for me, will you? I've got to go in back and pack some ice cream to be sent out. Sure. Mary Lou! Mary Lou! Guess I'd better get it myself. Mary Lou's ice cream parlor. Can I talk with Mary Lou? She went in back. I'll get her for you. Just a minute. Thank you. I tell you, it's getting too risky. That diamond's a private detective. Yeah, he came in the bar and started to rough up Walker. Well, that stupid Walker should have been more careful about passing out that money. What if Diamond catches him and makes him talk? He caught up. <laughs> but he didn't make Walker talk. What do you mean? I took care of Walker. I got a good shot at him from the alley. Well, maybe it's better like that. But look, if we don't... Hello? Yes? Mary Lou isn't here. Get off the line. What? What? Yeah, get off! Get me the 5th Precinct Police Station. It's a matter of life and death. I'll connect you. Oh, golly, please hurry. I'm ringing. 5th Precinct. Is Mr. Richard Diamond around there? He said to call Lieutenant Levinson. Oh, Diamond isn't here. That is the lieutenant. You know where I can reach them? Yeah, but that's about set all. Who's this? I'm a friend of Mr. Diamond's. I'm in an ice cream parlor. Ice cream parlor? Look, son. No, uh, no. I just heard someone say that they'd killed a man named Walker. And I think I know who's behind the counterfeit ring. What's the address? It's... Uh, oh, oh, Hello. Mm. Hello, kid. What's wrong? Hello. Good lucky we came out this way. I wonder how he heard us. He walked back and opened the door. What are we going to do with him? Well, we'll tie him up and gag him. There's a closet in the back, and we can put him in there until it's safe to take him out. Oh, but he's making too much trouble the way he is. <laughs> Okay. I can get him back there. You better go on over to the bar in case someone shows up. All right. Later tonight, I'll take the kid down to the river and teach him how hard it is to swim when he's dead. Listen here, young fella. If you're back here for trouble... Dad, I'm back for a lot of trouble, and I think you're going to help me out. You'd better leave, Sonny, or I'll call the law. Why don't you? What do you want? I want to know how long you've been back in the counterfeit racket. Now, look, Sonny, I've been going straight for a long time. You know something, Dad? I don't think so. Let's get down to the station and talk about it. You got a warrant, Shamus? I got a nasty disposition. You want me to show you? No. You want a gun, Dad? Why... What difference does it make? I'm going to look at it. A guy named Walker got dead from a gun. Now, let's let, let's see it. Sonny. Well, what is it? I can't show it to you. Yeah, why not? Because I got it under the bar pointed right at your belly. 
If I drag it out, it might scare the customers. Oh, it's like that, huh? It sure is. You see that door there in the back? I know. Now, that's a good boy. You just keep walking along your side of the bar and don't cry anything. I just had my floor scrubbed. It'd be a shame to spill you all over. Okay. Open the door. Go on out. Up the alley. You shoot, Walker? I might have. Oh, where you got your printing presses? You're just full of questions, aren't you, Sonny? Okay. Stop here. Behind the ice cream parlor, huh? Well, well, well. Mary! Uh, make mine hot fudge with the nuts. Mary! But just a minute. Say, hey, what's the idea? I thought you... Oh. Uh, good afternoon. I'm selling a new brand of Indian nuts. Great for banana splits. What's the shamus doing here? He's too smart. I gotta cut off his education. Are you crazy? This guy's got friends. That kid was calling the 5th Precinct, remember? Kid? Yeah, your, your little news hound. What did you do with him? He's all right until tonight. We got him locked up. Dad... I think I'll make you eat that 38. I don't think so. No difference if I kill you right here. Oh, hold it, Dad. We can't have a gun going off back here. Even if we could hide the shamus, they'd find the presses. Oh, so that's it. Those ice cream machines, the cover-up. Ain't he smart. What do you do? Ship the stuff out in ice cream cartons? What's with you? You want a tour of inspection? Come on, now, take it easy. He won't be smart for long. Well, how are you going to do it? We're going to take a walk, aren't we, shamus? Oh, I have the most horrible instep. I'll never make it without skates or something. You'll make it. Come on, the car's around front. Hey, hey, what's happening to the street? Oh, Dad. Yeah, no, no, it's only some drunk come out of the bar the wrong way. Funny, I didn't see him in there. Oh, this is very confusing. If this is 53rd Street, somebody's stolen some buildings. Oh, hey, hello. Now, take it easy, Shamus. I'm putting the gun in my pocket, but it's still right in line with your belt. I'm going back inside. No, 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 no. play it straight. Just like we were talking. Well, you're pretty unsociable, to say the least. What's the matter? Can't you even say hello? I'm lost. Uh, sure, sure. You're you're in an alley. The entrance is right out there. Oh, yeah? Oh, would you mind showing me? I seem to be a little confused. Now, look, it, it's right up there. Just keep going. Hey, where'd you go? Oh, no. Oh, there you are, Lieutenant. Lieutenant. Get the cop. Look out, Walt. Look out. <laughs> Get the girl, Walt. Come on, Dad. Give me that gun. Get out. Let go of me. Let me go, you lousy copper. You got him, Rick? He won't play. Get me. There. Now he will. Just take it easy, lady. Hey, what's going on? Otis. Yeah? Go out and start walking around the block. Huh? You hear me? Go on. Okay, but I don't get it. What do you want me to walk around the block for? I want you to get used to it, because that's what you're going to be doing for the rest of your time on the force. Oh. In Flatbush. What, boy? Yes. <laughs> Gee, Mr. Diamond, thanks for the dinner invitation, but where are we going? Well, I'm going to introduce you to Miguel. She's a redhead, Jeff, so no cracks about my office research. Oh, sure. But don't you think you should have called her first? How do you know she's got enough dinner? Jeff, this girl's got more steaks in her deep freezer than a bullfight arena sees in a year. Here we are. Yes? Oh, good evening, Mr. Diamond. Good evening, Francis. Uh, this is Jeff, Francis. He's going to have dinner with us. Hi. Oh, hi. Uh, come right in. Uh, Miss Asher's in the study, Mr. Diamond. Thank you, Francis. Uh, Mr. Diamond. Yes? You know the various items that you've left with me for... Safekeeping. Uh, 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 look, Francis, I promise I'll get them out of hock as soon as I get a paying client. Oh, no, no, it's not that, sir. I didn't really want to hold them as security in the first place. But as long as you insisted in such a fine collection, I'd like to show them to, well, to my girl, sir. Why, sure, Francis, I didn't know you had a girl. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. She's the upstairs maid in the apartment below us. Oh. I'm afraid I told her a wee fib to get acquainted, as it were. She thinks I'm an undercover agent, and I'm afraid I'm going to have to prove it. Wow, well, my gun and the badge should do the trick. And uh, if it doesn't work, just get under a cover. <laughs> oh, my George, that was the real... <laughs> yes, sir, good evening, sir. Uh, come on, Jeff, we're not appreciated. Rick... Hello. Hello. Helen, this is Jeff, the boy who's helping me send Dad Foster and company back to prison. 
Jeff, this is Helen Asher. Yes, sir. Well, thank you, Jeff. They had him locked up in the closet for a couple of hours, and he looked kind of hungry when he got him out. Uh, how about it, honey? You think you can grind up another cow? Oh, well, there's plenty for Jeff and me, but you've got to make up for three things. Three things? Yes. First of all, you haven't called me in two days. Second, you're half hour late for dinner. And third, well, I'll tell you later. Uh, I'll leave the room if you want me to. No, no, Jeff. You stay right here. You're going to literally see a man sing for his supper. Helen. All right. Come on, Jeff. We'll go dig into those nice, fat, juicy steaks. Oh, boy. Steaks? Hey, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. My taste buds just started whipping each other. My vibrato may sound like a machine gun, but I'll do it. Well, I thought you were kidding. Is he really going to sing, Miss Asher? No, I'm not going to sing Miss Asher. <laughs> I'm going to do a little song I used to sing with hip boots and a gondola. Oh. <laughs> You're breaking my heart cause you're leaving You've fallen for somebody new It isn't too easy believing You'd leave after all we've been through It's breaking my heart to remember the dreams we depended upon You're leaving a slow, dying ember I'll miss you, my love, when you're gone I wish you joy, though teardrops burn but if someday you should want to return, please hurry back and we'll make a new start. Till then you're breaking my Mr. Diamond, did you really sing in a gondola with hip boots on? Yeah, that's right, Jeff. Well, I know you don't need the hip boots anymore. Will you loan them to me? What for? I want to wait out of here. <laughs> well, get him. For that, you get two desserts. You have just heard Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Helen was played by Virginia Gregg, Lieutenant Levinson by Ed Begley. Also in our cast were Wilms Herbert, Tommy Bernard, Sammy Hill, Lou Krugman, and Polly Bear. Music was under the direction of Frank Worth. Richard Diamond is written by Blake Edwards and directed by Richard Sandville. Dick Powell soon will be seen in the screen version of the best-selling novel, Mrs. Mike. Now, this is Eddie King inviting you to be with us again at the same time next week when we will again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Hey.